Welcome to the Archive for Sexology. Among many other things, we also offer a free online curriculum in sexual health. I am its author, Erwin Haverly. The curriculum consists of six courses, six semesters. It can be studied not only at home, but also in the classroom. Right now, I would like to introduce you to a section in our second course, Human Reproduction, and ask the question, how does a human life begin? When scientists talk about the beginning of a new life or the beginning of the existence of a new individual, they usually employ the term conception. On the surface, this term seems simple enough, but it covers a very complex process that even now is not yet fully understood. This being the case, not all scientists use the word conception in the same way. Most people say that a woman has conceived when she has become pregnant. They then may also say that a conception has taken place inside her body. Conversely, they speak of contraception when a couple does not want to conceive and takes measures to prevent the woman from becoming pregnant. In this sense, then, contraception prevents the beginning of a pregnancy, while a conception marks the beginning of it. If we accept this usage, we can describe the biological processes that lead to conception, that is, to the beginning of a pregnancy. Among these processes are First, the union of a male and female sex cell, which produces a new single cell called zygote. This process is called fertilization. Second, the growth of the zygote by cell division, resulting in a hollow ball of cells called blastocyst. This process is called segmentation. Finally, the attachment of the blastocyst to the lining of the uterus. This process is called implantation. Now let's look at these processes a little more closely. They take place inside two internal female sex organs, the fallopian tubes and the uterus. When an egg is released from one of the ovaries, it almost immediately enters the open end of the adjacent fallopian tube. As it travels down this tube towards the uterus, it matures to become ready for the union with the sperm cell. Within a few hours, the egg reaches maturity while it is still in the upper third of the fallopian tube. This is the time when the sperm should arrive if a fertilization is to occur. The entire period in which egg and sperm can unite is less than 24 hours. If no such union takes place, the egg dies and disintegrates. Within a few hours after fertilization, that is, after the nucleus of the sperm has united with the nucleus of the egg, the result of the union, the zygote, begins a process of internal division. First, it divides into two cells, then four, eight, sixteen, and so on, doubling the number with each new division. This process of cell division or cleavage in the zygote is called segmentation. It transforms the zygote into a cluster of cells called morula, which, seen through a microscope, resembles a newberry. The morula slowly moves down the fallopian tube toward the uterus, where it arrives after about three days. By this time, it has developed into a hollow ball of cells called blastocyst. 
After its arrival in the uterus, the blastocyst continues to develop until, after another three to four days, it is ready to attach itself to the uterine lining. About one week after fertilization, this attachment begins. And after another week, the blastocyst has completely buried itself in the nourishing tissues that cover the inner surface of the uterus, the so-called endometrium. The entire extended process of the blastocyst burying itself in the uterine lining is called implantation and it accomplishes pregnancy. An implantation can occur only under certain proper conditions. For example, if the zygote should reach the uterus before it has developed into a blastocyst, no implantation is possible and pregnancy cannot be established. The same is true if the uterine lining is not prepared to receive the blastocyst. In both cases, the cell cluster will simply die and disintegrate. Here is a schematic drawing that summarizes the entire series of events. Starting from the left, we see the fertilized egg growing by cell division and moving slowly towards the interior of the uterus where it finally implants itself. Now, if you have followed me so far, you will remember that the entire movement from fertilization through segmentation to implantation takes about two weeks. If during this time anything goes wrong with even one of the steps involved, no pregnancy can occur. Still, for certain scientific reasons, many developmental biologists prefer to speak of a conception as soon as the process of fertilization is completed. On the other hand, some reproductive physiologists believe for their own scientific reasons that a new life begins with the process of implantation. For them, no conception occurs unless the fertilization leads to pregnancy. These different scientific approaches to the same problem can be confusing for a layperson who wants to know at what particular moment a human life begins. After all, in our everyday lives, we keep hearing and reading about the moment of conception. However, we may well remember that the advances of modern science have also shattered many traditional assumptions about the exact moment of death. With our increasing scientific knowledge, the beginning as well as the end of life have become more difficult to define. Indeed, it is now very hard to pinpoint any specific moment for either. It seems that we need to know still more and develop a more precise terminology before we can really answer these difficult questions.